this is Nathan Beverly, and welcome to Call for Salt. Right now, I want to talk about something that I have seen this theme come out ever since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, that um, momentous, momentous decision for the good uh, of babies, for the good of our country, for the good of what is everything that is right. Um, it was a courageous decision by the justices, and I celebrate that. But there's this theme that is going around, um, and this theme says that we ought not celebrate, that we ought not get too excited, that we ought not, um, we, we, we ought to do a whole lot more listening in this moment, in this these few days even after after the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We ought to, ought to do a whole lot more listening to the other side um, and try to be more compassionate and not to offend because uh, you know, lest our, cel- our, our celebrating will turn people off, will offend them, and uh, will we'll hurt our cause uh, to try to persuade people that abortion um, is, is not, the, not the option that they should, they should choose. Now, I want to say to that, um, I've been doing some thinking, uh, I've, uh, I've, I've looked into the Word. I just want to say, first of all, if you have been celebrating, if you have been excited and been joyful like me, it is okay to celebrate. It is okay to celebrate. This is an event. I mean, this. This. I'm sorry. This is. This is a momentous uh, Supreme Court decision that we've been waiting for for almost 50 years. God bless all of the people that have been in the trenches. That have you know people. Our parents, my parents' age, that have have ever since. They that they've heard about this issue, it's it's sh- it's been a shock to them that this could be, even be possible in our country, that that we could sacrifice our innocent children up, up for the sake of convenience, even even our some of our innocent children that that the doctors say are going to be you know their Down syndrome or have a health difficulty, that it would be better to to end that child's life in the in the womb than to to let that child be birthed and 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 have the, its best shot and its best chance at life. Um, all of those things, all of those people that have fought and, 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 you know, just sweat, worked on, worked and sweat and prayed and weeped and, and just given their lives. Some of them, that's been their ministry. This many people have given their lives to see the end to abortion. And, and, and that's taken shape in many different ways. Some people are more on the protest side and more the convincing and the, um, the, you know, that side of things, and other people's have been more feet on the ground, more working with the women in the crisis pregnancy centers to offer compassion and hope, and resources and financials to help, and any to make it as attractive as possible not to have abortion, not to have an abortion. And so we live, we've we've lived through these decades. I'm 42 years old myself, and um, I was introduced to the problem of the. I should say problem, I should say the evil of abortion when I was about 10 years old. You know, I was probably even younger, but when 10 years old was when it really hit me. And I've, I've kind of shared my story when I first actually saw pictures of aborted babies that my mom had brought home from the March for Life in Washington, D.C. And it just, it scarred me for life in a very good way. It, it brought anger and sadness in a deep, deep form in my 10-year-old little heart. And I said to myself in some way, in some shape or form, I said to myself, I am going to do everything I can to stand against this, to, to persuade, to, in my life, to try to do my part to end this horrible thing because this is just, I see their babies. I mean, I, well, you, when you look at them, you see their, you know, I'm not, I, before I go any further, I just want to say, if you have children in the car, if you have any children that you may not want to hear some of these things, it will be somewhat graphic because I do want to explain what abortion is. But I saw, I saw the the body parts. I saw the blood. I saw the I saw the just the different ways that they aborted children, um, the different methods that they used, and it was horrifying. It was absolutely disgusting, and I could tell that there was a baby. And as I got older, I saw the ultrasounds of my own children. I saw my little girl um, reach up and grab her toes in the womb, roll over. They pushed on the, their mommy's womb 
I could feel them pushing up and I would play with them on the other side and, and, and just poke back, you know, gently poke back. Um, I sang to my, my first little girl from a very young age in the womb. I sang to her every night. I put my mouth, my head right up against my wife's belly and I sang to her. I sang a little lullaby that was just for her. Um, there's no one in the world that can convince me that's a clump of cells. There's no one in the world that can convince me that I, that I shouldn't believe my, my lying eyes. Um, these are real babies. These are real human beings. They're unique. They're precious. They're created by God. And they are valuable. And, and they're not part of the woman's body. They are their own separate body. They're dependent upon the woman's body for quite a period of time. That does not make them under the autonomy. That does not make them autonomous. does not mean that they're not autonomous as their own body. That's just absolutely. I mean, their mother's heart isn't beating for their heart. They have their own heart. They don't. They have their own brain. They have their own body. You know, it's just it's just it's all of these arguments that we hear are just absolutely disgusting. And and I want to say that if you are somebody today that has um, been intimidated by and been quieted by those that are saying, well, we need to keep our voices down. We need not celebrate. We don't want to offend the other side. Don't be intimidated. Don't be ashamed to celebrate. You know, I was on Facebook. <laughs> One of the things that I, I had to do uh, on Facebook that I felt compelled to do was get on Facebook and just ask my brothers, those who agree with me, hey, I want to dance right now. Did, can anyone give me permission to dance? <laughs> Um, and, and I just, it was my way of celebrating with those that had the like heart, like mind with me. And, um, everybody would give me likes and, and say, go for it. And I would respond back and, you know, Baptists don't dance was one of the comments I had. <laughs> uh, that's just, for those, those who know Baptists, uh, they've been pretty conservative in some circles and they know in the past they haven't believed in any sort of dancing, but Baptists can dance about stuff like this. I can tell you that. <laughs> And I can tell you that you need not be ashamed because there has been dancing in heaven. There has been shouting in heaven. This decision glorifies God. This, this decision to stand for moral justice of the most innocent of God's creation, this glorifies God. This glorifies heaven. This, this, this is a, a celebration in heaven. And you can celebrate too. And I want to talk about some of the just some of the things that go along with that because I think I think we can be intimidated easily by sometimes people on our own side that just want to just always just want to have this air of showing compassion and nothing else, no, nothing that would even be, you know, they don't want to even be conceived that we're rubbing anything in. And and we'll talk about that. I want to talk specifically about that and what what the distinctions that we need to have because we we don't want to be arrogant. We don't want to be proud. Uh, we want to uh, we want to represent Christ the way he would be and how how he would be. Um, you know, Jesus. You know, confronted the woman caught in adultery. Uh, I mean, sorry, he confronted the, her accusers that were going to stone her under the law. She was supposed to be stoned if she was caught in adultery. Well, he confronted her her accusers and he wrote something in the sand. We don't even know what he wrote, but. Whatever he wrote in the sand, um, he said, "He said, um, whoever whoever has never sinned, cast the first stone." And uh, they all left. And he wrote something in the sand. They all left. But what did he say to the woman? <clears throat> he was compassionate with her. He showed mercy, right? But he said, "Go and sin no more." He called it a sin. And I'm sure that God, he knew that she was repentant. He forgave her. He said, "Where are your accusers?" He forgave her. He showed mercy. Um, but he called it sin. And he said, go and sin no more. And that's that's what we ought to be. Uh, that's that ought to be our heart. Now, I want, I, want to, I want just want to look at 1 Corinthians real quick. The love chapter. This is the love chapter. What does the Bible say about what is love and how we should be loving to both sides, to both sides um, of this issue, um, to everyone? Let's look at that because I think the Bible gives us very clear answers. Um, that we maybe maybe haven't considered. Um, it's 1 Corinthians 13. It says, um, verse, start with verse 4. It says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. 
does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You know, I, what, what stands out to me is love is patient. You know, we're patient with those that we disagree with. People have been patient for 50 years. We've, you know, we, we haven't, you know, many, many, many people have been, have been lovingly given the consistent message that, of what abortion is and, and that to choose life and that, that, that God will forgive anyone that commits the sin of abortion. God has mercy. He will forgive those that are repentant. We need to be patient and kind with those who we disagree with. Um, I've seen I've seen people out on social media that have not have been less than kind. Sometimes far from that. I don't even know if, who which ones of them are Christians sometimes, or if they even profess to be Christians. But Christians ought never to be impatient and, and unkind to those that even when they disagree sharply with them. Um, Love does, and the other thing is, love does not parade itself. It's not all about us. It's not about, all about us making ourselves uh, somebody in this. It's about it's about the babies. It's about the cause that we believe in. It's about our God that we're trying to glorify and honor. It's about the souls of these people that we're trying to reach and that we even that we disagree with. Um, we that we care about them. It, we ought to be patient and kind and loving. Um, it's not puffed up. It's not this arrogant attitude that, you know what, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I win this argument. I'm gonna rub it in that we won. Um, you know, it's not this arrogance. Um, it does not behave rudely. You know, we don't treat people rudely, as if they don't matter, as if they're what they say is not worthy to be listened to, as if they're stupid. Um, even if, they, even if they're stupid arguments, even if their arguments have make no sense, we still treat them as if they do. We not as if the arguments make sense, but if as if the people matter and what they say that the, their their worth and of being able to say it matters. Um, we listen and we show that we consider what they're saying. Nothing wrong with that. It's not. It doesn't change the truth. It doesn't mean that we we are compromising, but we we show kindness. And we, we, instead of being rude, um, does not seek its own. It's not selfish. Um, again, that's not all about us. Um, that's not what it's about. It's not about winning the argument. It's not provoked. You know, it's not someone who is just like, oh, you're just going to get offended so easily. You know, there's a lot of things when I, when I talk to people on social media that, I dis that disagree with me. And, and they're hurling insults. They're calling me the B word. They're calling me the, the they call me idiots. Um, you know, I've just been called all kinds of names, you know, worse things than that. Um, but to remain calm and realize that the world is, and people that are, that have disagreed, they're going to, they're going to be that way. They don't have God. They don't have any reason necessarily to love, love us. Um, but we ought to love them back and, 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 and show them compassion and kindness, even when they're treating us that way. Um, thinks no evil. Love thinks no evil. You know, we don't, you know, want to, want ish, wish ill upon our enemies. Um, now, he, but here's the, here's the, you know, all of that, all of that is where we can go wrong sometimes in celebrating in the wrong way. There's a wrong way to do it and a right way to do it. Um, but here, here's the right way. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. See, abortion very clearly, very clearly is iniquity. It's very clearly the murder of the most innocent of our children the most precious of our children. And yes, there are difficult circumstances. Yes, there are, you know, exceptions to just be a woman doing it for convenience. There's rape, incest, all of these very, very difficult circumstances. And I don't want to downplay any of the difficulty of that. But what is, what is the right way to rejoice? We're not rejoicing <clears throat> in the fact that we're winning. We're not rejoicing in sticking it to them. Um, we're rejoicing in the truth, the truth that that babies, our lives are valuable, that they're precious, and that, that now, with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, they are now experiencing dignity and honor that they have not received before. That life has been raised, the bar has been raised for life. That life is um, more, more sacred than it was before, much more sacred. 
because we now the government now that the highest court of the land recognizes this and they recognize that you know what we can't just automatically give this right to any woman we let the people decide we we let this go back to the states that's where it was constitutionally supposed to be decided and the people can and vote the, their legislatures in however they see fit see fit but we are not going to we do not are not going to give this as an automatic right for a woman to kill her child this is a very serious issue and it needs to go back to the states um, so we rejoice in the truth that life is more affirmed that life is more is more valuable now um, we don't rejoice but in the other side we don't rejoice in iniquity the other side those on the left those that are having literally their minds are being blown right now by what's happened they're rejoicing in iniquity oftentimes many of them are celebrating and, and um, not all of them, but many of them are just rubbing it in our face that they want to celebrate their abortion. Um, they are, they are rejoicing, and many of them rejoice in the fact that they get to at least at least they get to have that cho choice. Whether you think abortion is good and you want to celebrate that the very evil of actual abortion, or whether you think the choice to have an abortion is good and you want to celebrate that you should have the choice, you're still rejoicing in iniquity because having the choice to murder someone should never be a law should never come to the light of day in a civilized compassionate society it never should have but it has so that is rejoicing in iniquity and lest we lest we we aid and lest we encourage the left to say Okay, well, you can rejoice, but you can rejoice in your iniquity, but we're not going to rejoice in, in what we believe is true because we don't want to offend you. We don't want you to feel bad, or we don't want you to think that we hate you. Going that far and refusing to rejoice in the truth because we don't, we don't want to offend, they're just going to keep rejoicing in their iniquity, and we're not going to pull them. We're not going to convince them that way. So we need to rejoice in the truth. Be unashamed for the truth. The truth is what will win people. The gospel is the power of God to salvation. Not, you know, not other things. Not, not our just not being quiet and not offending them in any way, shape, or form. We need to be unashamed and stand for what we believe. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. Murder, um, absolute murder uh, on a federal level, um, a woman being able to get abortion in whatever state she wants for you know has, has been overturned and many women will not make those choices now to abort it'll be it'll be more difficult for them and they'll think twice about it they'll see that the government has said now it's, a, it's illegal now so they'll think twice about it because of that there's a lot more that there's a check on their con their, on, on the national conscience and on it will be on individuals consciences that wait a minute Maybe I maybe there's a reason why they're they're making these decisions. Maybe maybe you know this is my baby I'm talking about. This is the one that that is growing inside of me. That I sometimes if they've let it go on far enough that I feel kick. Can I really do this? There's a lot more discouragements now to do, to doing that. And praise God for that. We ought to celebrate that. We ought to celebrate that. that it's more difficult to murder an innocent child. And. So I, that, that's what I wanted to bring out from 1 Corinthians. So there's the right. So what's the key distinction? The key distinction between um, celebrating in a right way and celebrating in a wrong way. Celebrating in a wrong way is this kind of gloating pride that we are. We won and you lost and, you know, um, all of these just rude ways of, of treating people. And, it's, and we, where we make it about our push, putting ourselves up and making ourselves... Our, our pride, our prideful selves. The distinction is that, the difference is that's the wrong way and the right way to do it is out of joyful justice. You know, all of my, the people in my church and, and uh, that I've, I talked to about this when this was happening and, the, and my closest friends and family, not a one of them was, was wanting to stick it to or was having this arrogant pride. We were just joyful that babies were going to be saved now. We're, we're excited. We're thinking about the babies. It's about the babies. It's about innocent life. It's about what God's, God's law being upheld. You know, God's moral law being upheld by our, our highest court in the land. That's important. That, 
that uh, is a testimony to what to what God says is right and wrong. That'll help lead people to repentance when 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 man's law reflects God's law more. That's another that's another uh, testimony to the national conscience of of what is right and wrong. There's less confusion. There's more clarity of right and wrong. Those things are things to be, rejoice about. They're things to dance and to jump up and and. I mean, I you should have seen me. <laughs> if you want, if you haven't seen my 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 video of my emotional response, my raw emotional response shortly after, check it out. Um, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bit fool. I look a bit fool. I'm just I'm just I'm just crazy. I mean, I'm so excited. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. Don't be afraid. Come out. Come out of the out of your shell. Come out of your shell. Come out of your fear. Even if your church is telling you, oh, well, you know, we need to sit down and listen and, and, and be show compassion to the mothers and not offend, show compassion to the mothers and come out and to celebrate. You can do both. You can do both. Don't be ashamed. Um, joyful justice. What is this joyful justice? A little bit more about that. Well, justice, um, come, justice and joy, jo our joy is fueled by, the by our sense of justice. You know, God, God created us with this sense of justice inside. That's part. I believe that's part of us being created in God's image. We, the Bible says that God put eternity in our hearts, the things that matter beyond this life, um, the things that are meaningful. Um, and God gave us all a sense of justice. And when we see somebody being abused, ever, there's an anger that rises up within us if we're, we have any sort of conscience, if we have any sort of compassion. There's an anger and there's a the desire to stop that, you know. If I see someone beating someone up on the street to, you know, you know, and some bully treating a, a, a child or a kid in a, in, a, in a horrible way, I, I want to step in. You know, I, I want to stop it. That, that that there's something about that. Is, I can't just let that happen. The average person on the street's not going to walk by if someone's doing that. They're gonna they're gonna try to stop it um, because that's God the way God created us. So when we know what abortion is, when we know what it does, and we know that it happens by the millions, by six, over 63 million babies have been aborted in this country under a law, under our law, which was gravely, which was a, was a grievous, grievously long, wrong, dis, uh, wrongly decided law um, in 1973. That is gone now. That is gone. Praise the Lord. That this joy that we have is fueled by this sense of justice being served, the sense of justice being satisfied, that we've, for 50 years, uh, that we've seen injustice on this issue. We've, we've tried and we've fought and we've so hard in, in this injustice. It just seemed like it might never happen in our day. But it's finally happened. And this is sense of relief, this sense of justice being satisfied. This is very, very biblical. Um, we are folk and, and wise, and it's not just justice that we want to punish, punish, punish our enemies um, or individuals that do this. We're focused more on the babies. We're focused more on um, dignity and, and the worth being brought to these babies, the sacredness of their life, the sanctity of life being raised higher, and that God is glorified in this. We are, we are, uh, we're joyful about that. We're joyful, um, like I said, that justice is served, but also that justice is served in punishing evil, do evil, evil doers. Now, I want to be very careful about this because I don't want to be. I, I know there's going to be a lot of people that misunderstand me. You see, the Bible has has it almost appears contradictory, but it's not. The Bible has verses on both sides that that I want to read real quick. First, the Bible does does say this. It says, don't rejoice, uh, Proverbs 24, 17, and 18. It says, do not gloat when your enemy falls, when they stumble. Do not let your heart rejoice, or the Lord will see and dis disapprove and turn his wrath away from them. Now, this is talking about an individual. If you have an individual enemy in your life, that we're not to gloat and, and desire their punishment and desire and, and look to enjoy the fact that they are being punished and they are suffering. Um, because we, you know what, when they stumble, you know, we don't want them to stumble. We want them to repent. We want them to turn back to God. That's our first desire for, for all of our enemies.
for even the ones that hate us the most. We don't want to rejoice over individuals that hurt us. We want to, to be the love of Christ to them. That is absolutely true. But there is the other side. Let's talk about this. Um, Proverbs 11.10 says, When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there is jubilation. So, when justice is served and the righteous are, are held up, the city rejoices. I mean, you have a group of people here, a city, um, a corporate entity, that, that is rejoicing. But these same people, when the wicked perish, there is jubilation. And that is a good thing. That is that is the way it, it was meant to be. That's the way God created us. That we, when 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 the cause, when, when those that are are trying to bring in evil, and I, I don't even think about women here so much. I think about I think about the politicians. I think about the doctors that are making money off this. That when they are when their cause is to bring in evil and, and murder um, for political power, for for money, and all of those things. When these people are doing this, and and we've seen this injustice over and over. When they're when they're finally turned away and they're turned away from that and, and unable to do that, we. We celebrate. Now, it says here that, you know, even when they perish, you know, there's sometimes it can get to a point. I'm not saying that we're at that point right now in this country. But I'm saying when wicked are so evil and so persecuting and so killing and murdering and, and, and cruel to, peep to, to a people, when there is this general groups in society that are doing this to other people, it is a, it is a good and right thing to celebrate the fact that, when they are turned, when when they perish in their way, when they are destroyed, when they why? Because not because we can't, we want the individuals that are doing this to suffer. Individuals, we want to repent, but we their cause. We are glad that their cause is is no more. Their cause is 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 being destroyed. What they stand for, what they're doing, that that is being stopped. That is what we celebrate. We celebrate good overcoming evil. And that is, that is always something that the Bible says to celebrate. Good, the good cause of good overcoming evil. But on it, it the difference is, is like a corporate situation, the corporate abortion industry, the corporate political Democrat party and political side that is part of this. Um, yes, we celebrate that they are losing. We celebrate that they, that they are. That these evil cause that because of their evil cause they're losing because of their evil cause their cause is going down praise the Lord and we can celebrate that we should it is good and right and just it, unless you think that well this you know this is proverbs you know this is not necessarily a command to do this well let's look at Re- Revelation Revelation chapter eighteen it talks about mystery Babylon this is a, a kingdom there's a lot of different um, Interpretation of what this could be, but a lot of biblical scholars believe that this is a specifically speaking of um, some sort of country or city or some kind of geographical, some kind of governmental power that has is very um, uh, corrupt. And one of the things is that they are persecuting and killing the saints. It says they are full of the blood of the saints, and this is and they are destroyed in Revelation eighteen. Whoever this government is, whoever this corrupt entity is, they are destroyed. They are killed. They are wiped out. Um, and this is what it says in, in Revelation eighteen twenty. It says, "Rejoice over her," talking about this mystery that's called Babylon the Great. So it's called also called the Whore of Revelation seventeen and eighteen, chapter seventeen and eighteen. You can read it for yourself. But this whore, this this, they also it was also described in an imagery of a woman riding a beast, of a, a woman that's. Uh, associated with the Antichrist. Well, this woman, this whatever country or city this, this woman represents, she's destroyed. And that means the people in that nation. In the, you know, all of those that represent that. And it says, Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. When she's destroyed, God says to rejoice over her. Now, this is a corporate entity again. This is not individuals, your personal enemy in your life that's treating you bad. No. This is talking about a corporate entity that represents a cause of evil. An entity that represents a cause of evil 
we have every right and we are actually commanded to rejoice at their downfall. Rejoice of, rejoice at it. Now, I, I pray, and I, I pray for the downfall of the Democrat Party. They, their cause is, is evil. I, and I, I, I will not be ashamed of that. If you are a Democrat or you vote Democrat, um, just look up their platform and tell me that it's okay. Tell me why it's okay. It, tell me why it's not actually evil. It's not shaking their fist in God's face. Show me how it doesn't oppress people. It, abortion itself is the biggest, the greatest oppression this country has ever seen. So we ought to celebrate the downfall of the wicked in their cause. Not that they suffer and, and that they're going to be punished. And No, we individuals, we want them to repent. But if they're not going to repent, we'll celebrate the fact that their cause is going down. Their cause is going down. Their evil is dying with them. And that is good. So that, that's the difference. And um, I just want to say this last thing in closing. The Bible also says to weep with those who weep and rejoice rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. There's a lot of people on the other side that are weeping, but it's not a just cause to weep. But we can weep for them and cry out to their God for their salvation because they're people that are deceived. They're people that, that are spouting off this this nonsense. I mean, you, I, I try. I, you know, if I, I could recount the illogical arguments, and every time we give on the pro life side, we try to give a a good argument back. It, it, it's they shut you down, or they don't listen to you, or they call you names. It, 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 their arguments don't make sense because that's all they've got. You know, it, you know, if every every time they want to bring up exceptions, like exceptions are all that abortion's about, like you know the the life of the mother, like she's you know, she's she, her she, her life's going to be at serious risk if she bears a child. Most of the time, that's not the case. But even when it is the case, there's not a I don't know any any pro life people that say, oh, you know, there should not be an exception for the life of the mother if if a mother chooses that she wants to abort her child, and that's the only way to save her life. Then most I know. All the pro-life people I know, including myself, would say that that is an exception that we should. But they want to run to those things. They want to run to the most extreme exceptions possible when the vast majority of abortions are committed for convenience. And yes, the women are oftentimes poor and it's going to be harder for them. But that's a gift from God. And we don't murder innocent children just because they're a burden. We don't murder children that are born, already born, and they decide that they are too much of a burden. We don't do that. That's not okay. That's, this is a civilized society where we care about life we care about our children if anything in this country we care about children that's one thing that our we pretty much all agree on unless they're in the womb just watch an ultrasound that's all i gotta say watch the ultrasounds look at the pictures google them google the pictures have the courage if you don't understand if you don't agree have the courage I beg of you, I beg of you, kindly, I beg of you kindly, I beg of you to look up the pictures of aborted babies. Just look at them. Let it sink in and tell me if you feel differently after that. Because I think you will. There was a young lady um, in high school that I showed some pictures of the aborted babies to. She was pro-choice, and she changed her mind to being pro-life by just looking at it. She had no idea. She had no idea. A lot of people don't. we got to give people a little bit of... Some people have ing still have ignorance over this. we got to understand that. But there's no reason, there's no excuse to have continue in that ignorance. There's no excuse. Uh, if, if you are pro-choice today, and you, and you are upset about this ruling, all i got to say is God loves you. And I love you no matter what. You can call me all the names in the book. I love you, and I love the child that the child. I love the children, but I, but I, I will never, never say that you should have the right to murder your child or to end the life of your child. I just can't do it. It's a human being. It's not your body. It's an independent body. It's a, it's a separate body. 
and it's someone that God made and they're unique and they're precious. They have their own DNA. They reach up for life. And we want, and so much of our society wants to just say, oh, it's okay to end it. No. I can't, I can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't allow it. I can't personally, I can't vote for those that would allow it. But God loves you and He offers forgiveness if you will repent and turn to Him. Through Jesus Christ who died on the cross for your sins, paid all the punishment for your sins, if you'll just come to Him and say, God, I'm sorry. I am a sinner. I need you. Please save me. He'll wash you with His precious blood and you'll be new. And if you're a Christian and you just you haven't, you're a little afraid to speak out because maybe you started to and you were intimidated by your fellow Christians that would say, oh, well, let's be careful now. Don't, don't worry about it. If you're not, if you don't have pride in your heart, check your heart. But if you don't have pride in your heart and you're not arrogant and you're not just trying to rub it into your the other side, but you, you're excited and you're, you're because of the momentousness of this decision and how this will save babies' lives, if that's your motivation, jump for joy, scream, holler, dance. This is the greatest Supreme Court decision that's ever been handed down. And we have a right to rejoice. Unashamed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. God bless you if you hung in and watched this whole thing especially. Thank you.